you would turn your hymn book, yeah, turn your hymn book, turn your Bibles to the book of St. Luke, book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 1. In verse 1 of chapter 12 of the book of Luke, in the meantime, there were gathered together in a, num a number of old multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another. He began to say unto his disciples, first of all, now you'll notice before this verse, this chapter starts, uh, he said something to them in another, uh, in 53 of 11. He says, and he, and as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to revoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. And so we see here that he's got this, this bunch that was gathered together, and there are the scribes and the Pharisees and. Of course, the scribes were the ones that jotted everything down and wrote things, and the, and the Pharisees are the ones that were the hypocrites, and they were the ones that was always uh, trying to get Jesus to say something, and that they might uh, be like uh, throwing a chunk into the cog of a, of a wheel or something. They wanted to stop him, and so we see here. This is what he's uh, in in chapter 12. He says, "In the meantime." when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, and this is why he was telling them this, he said here, and beware ye of the leavening of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, yeah. or they are hypocrites who pretend to be what they are not. But he says they're, they're hypocrites, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be uh, known. And the disciples, and we wanted to, uh, in, in uh, I believe it's in uh, Matthew's gospel in the 16th chapter, there, the, the, the thing with the Lebanon, the Lebanon was something that they didn't understand in one of the places there because they said to Jesus, said, or he, they said to one another, is it because we didn't bring any bread? Right. Now they knew the Lebanon, what it did to bread. But it also gives another scripture over there where that the woman took the Lebanon three, and mixed it into three parts of meal and hid it. Now, the leavening is a type of sin, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing of it is, sin cannot be seen every time that you look at it. And you have to be, you have to have a spiritual eye and a spiritual understanding sometimes to be aware of sin. Right. And so here he's talking to the, to the, to the Pharisees, to, uh, to, uh, to the people here, and he says, you beware of that leavening. You beware of what they say. You beware of what they write down. And he says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. And we see this morning that applies to us also in the same of what we say in the corner or in the closet or we whisper to somebody else in the, in the ear or something of this nature. Listen, it's going to all be brought out. Amen. Every word it, that we are accountable for, it will be brought out. And the Lord will bring this to our attention and say, this is what you said and this is what you did. And listen, this is what you're going to lose because that you had this thought or that you had this uh, doubt in your mind about the Lord Jesus Christ or that you... Uh, with bad mouth in your neighbor or things of this nature, it's going to be brought out. There's nothing going to be covered up and we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ ashamed because that we lived in such a way. And, and right. it's sad, it's sad to say this, And but listen, we have a terrible fight on our hands each day that we get up and it's this flesh. And this flesh has, and I say so many times, this flesh has never been saved. Right. This flesh has not got the will of God in it. This flesh will die because it has sin. It will pay the sin debt. And that is 
dying, and that's what uh, in Romans says that uh, the 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 wages of sin is death, and that's the reason why this morning that we have the graveyards out here, and that's the reason that they get fuller and they get fuller and fuller because people are dying because they have sinned, and right. they've got to pay that debt. And there's not but one that I know of. There's some that were were taken out, but Jesus Christ is the only one that walked upon this earth perfect and did not sin but yet he died for our sins amen to cover our sins and to keep us from a devil's hell if we would would, would only listen to what the, the god's word says and so he said here you beware of that leavening that the pharisees which are hypocrites for uh, he says there's nothing that's going to be there's nothing that's going to be covered up that shall not be revealed and you this uh, again today you know we think that we have things covered up pretty well and uh, we nobody don't know it but listen one of these days uh, one of your friends or or what might be sent up but the things of it, it's going to be revealed what what is said so here therefore in verse 3 Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in the darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetop. Amen. Now, you take me, from, get me a ladder, and let me climb up on the house here, and say, hey, I want to tell you what Larry said about you. That's, that's what he's saying here. It's going to be proclaimed. Right. It's going to be it's going to be revealed what uh, what sin has done to the, to us and how they how that we act with it, with this sin. So he said here he said it's going to be proclaimed on the housetops. And I say unto you, my friend, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Amen. Now. I want you to look at something this morning. If I can find it, find it real quick. In John's Gospel, 15, 12. John's Gospel, 15, 12. All right, you're there. John 15, 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his, for his friend. For ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I commanded you. Amen. Henceforth, I call you not servants. Now listen, this morning, he's talking to us this morning. He's talking to us and saying, hey, you know, we say, well, we're, we're the servants of God. We're the servants. But here what he's saying is that he has befriended us and we're his friend. And he says here, he says, I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. So he says, henceforth in verse 15, I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. And so this morning, when, when God's Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts and, and, and intervenes in our thoughts and all of this, listen, it's God talking to the Holy Spirit, telling Him to reveal to these things to us. And listen, why He's doing this is because we are His friend. Amen. We're not, he's, he's saying you're not considered a servant as much as you are a friend because uh, He said, I have... I have made these things known unto you. And he says in verse 16, Ye have not chosen me, Amen. but I have chosen you right. and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that, that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. And listen, that's, that's your friend, Jesus Christ. And over here in our lesson this morning, he says here, and I, in verse 4, And I say unto you, my friend, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And that, listen, is them more than one. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a, 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 a many people out here, and they do it all the time, getting these guns, and they're going in these places and killing these people. That's the them. 
But now notice what he says here. Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. They have no control over your soul. Amen. And they have no control over how that you serve the Lord and where you're going. But he says here, But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now you say, well, is that the devil? No, that's not the devil. Because let me tell you something, the devil has not got the power to kill you and to do with him what he wants to. And the only way that he can get anything, any permission at all, is he's got to give it, uh, he's got to get it from God. So right. it, it, it's, it, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that you're to fear about uh, uh, your soul. But listen, we that are saved, he says, you're my friend. Amen. And what, what, uh, back over in there, he says, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friend for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And this morning, listen, this morning he's speaking to you. Uh, it's not that I'm saying anything that's great or anything, but listen, the Holy Spirit is here this morning, and the Holy Spirit is with each one of us this morning, and He's taking this, these words, and He's, he's making a, a meaning out of them, and He's telling you these things this morning, and there's, there's things here this morning probably that He's telling you that you might not want everybody to hear. Right. But listen, it's good for you. And you need to hear it because you're a child of God. And listen, it don't mean that you're perfect because you, like I say, you've got that body that's sinful and it will never be saved until it dies and it's going to die and, and, and rot. And so listen, back in our lesson now, he says here in the verse uh, uh, 6, he says, Are not five spare a soul for two fatherings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hair of your head are all numbered. Fear Amen. not, therefore, ye are more valuable than many sparrows. And he's saying here, are not five sparrows sold for a certain amount? Listen, they would buy these, these, these birds and things to, to lay on the altar and all this, and they were they had a they had a uh, an amount on their head. But he says here, who here he says, uh, ye are of more value than many sparrows. And listen, that's because that he went to the cross of Calvary and died for you, and you're his child, Amen. and you're his friend, and he's your friend. And listen, you need to you need to remember this every day that you walk upon this earth because hey, the devil is there just like he was here when they were meeting with the Pharisees and the and the, and the scribes and all this. They was wanting to catch Jesus in something. Listen, the devil is out there as a roaring lion and he's wanting to catch you in something and cause you to have problems in that flesh and 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 you can lose you can lose your reward you can you can be drawn away from the lord and not serve him like you want to your happiness is not as good as it should and so he says you're worth more than a bunch of sparrows Amen. also in verse 8 he says i say unto you whosoever shall confess me before men shall him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of God. And listen, not only, not only, the, and, and you know, we've been studying some dying man about the angels and all this. Listen, he confesses to the angels that are in heaven. He confesses that you're his child, you're his friend. And listen, he's, 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 he's happy to do this. Amen. And here he wants to know here, uh, he said, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. And so this morning, when you have an opportunity, when you have an opportunity to, to confess the Lord Jesus Christ to someone that is uh, harping about this and about that, and just have, have an opportunity to confess him, do it. Amen. Do it. Please do it because, listen, your Father in heaven is sitting there confessing you before the angels and before God, and He's taking up the slack between you and God, and He's covering up for you because, listen, if God sees if God sees sin, He hates it. Amen. And listen, because the Jesus Christ blood 
is was shed on the cross of Calvary and it covered your sin, listen, God cannot see that sin because Jesus Christ shed it for you and it was applied to your heart and he can't see that sin. Amen. And so listen, he's, he's right there on the, he's right there beside of God and, and, and that's what the Bible says. He ascended and sat on the right hand of the Father. He's there making intercession for you and for me this morning. And so we this morning need to take uh, this next year and we ought to take, we ought Amen. to take heed and, and think about this. Listen, we've got a wonderful God that we're serving, a, a wonderful Jesus Christ that we're serving. And who, who should we fear? We have no reason to fear. And I know, I know that the old devil gets into us and we worry about this and we fear about what's going to happen and all this. But listen, who's got the last say? Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus Christ. And so he said, I'll never, I'll never... He don't say, I, I might not, but he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so take hope and, 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 and think about this because what he says is true. And if, he's, if what he says is not true, then we're all gone. Mm -hmm. But he, it's what he says is true. Amen. And so he said here in verse uh, uh, 10, <clears throat> And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man... It shall be forgiven him. Now you can you can you can do what you will, uh, and you listen to what he's saying here. You can say what you will about Jesus Christ, and you can be forgiven. And and and, and listen, it just shiver, I shiver to even think about anybody saying that Jesus Christ never existed. Jesus Christ didn't die for us. Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. But listen to what he says here. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto whom, him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Amen. Now why do you think that he used the Holy Ghost? Because, listen, the Holy Ghost he sent when he went to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost down here, and he took up his abode, and he's, he's within you, and he's making... He's, he's comforting you. And listen, if you, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, listen, there's no forgiveness for it. Right. There's no forgiveness. And, and I, I, I shudder to even think of a, the meanest, vilest person that ever lived even doing this. But listen, I'm sure, I'm sure that it goes on. Mm -hmm. And uh, because if it wasn't, he wouldn't, put, he wouldn't have warned us here. But he said here, uh, and when... And when they bring you into the synagogues and into the masters and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. That's when they're when you when you're brought in and those people that are that are uh, over you and all this. And of course, it was back in the uh, uh, Bible time too. But he says, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Amen. And so here it is uh, in uh, John, I believe it says in John 14, 12. I want to read something if I can find it real quick. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father, what I've told you, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. Now he's doing this for you to glorify the Father. Amen. And he's he's also, like I said, well, he's 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 making intercession for you this morning, and he's keeping you. Uh, in God's grace, He's keeping you, uh, God, from seeing the old wickedness that you do here in these bodies. But He says here, If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth 
with you and shall be in you, and I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So that is what I've been saying this morning. You have the Holy Spirit, and you can you can and you listen to some of these false prophets or these goody good shoes and say, tell them that you've got to have you've ha you've got the Holy Spirit within you, and they'll laugh at you. Mm -hmm. uh, they will. But listen, we have, we've got it. Amen. And it's, it's, he come in and he makes his abode with us. And he, he, he talks to us and he speaks to us and he listens to what God says. He listens to what Jesus says and he keeps us informed. And so we need to this morning, uh, we need to really uh, understand what we've got. Amen. Because it's, it's, uh, it's very important. And then in, in the, here, notice here, and one of the companies said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Now, he was really been listening to him, but he is interested in how much money his 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 brother had got in a, in a, in a settlement or something or another, and he's wanting the master to speak to his brother. Now, listen to what he said. And he said unto him, Man, who made me judge or a divider of you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. And this covetousness is... A, is something, it's a word that meaning that uh, I would want something that somebody else has got, and that's worldly possessions or even spiritual possessions. Because you remember a man by the name of Simeon or Simon uh, that uh, tried to buy uh, right. from the apostles how to uh, to uh, baptize the Holy Ghost or to, uh, uh, to tell other people about. Uh, what was going on and they said they said you've got a devil mm -hmm. you've got a devil and you need to pray that the Lord will forgive you so this this thing here this thing of covetousness it's stinginess it's it's wanting something that uh, other people have got and right. he says here he says here take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses and so he's telling this man up here that wanted him to to get his brother to split his inheritance with him. Hey, it's that's not that's not what that's not what's important. This right. Morning. The world the worldly possessions. Listen, we all desire them, and we need them. We have to have them. And we and sometimes we worry and we uh, we worry and we worry about not getting enough and all this. But listen, what he says here. He says here, take heed and beware of this, because he says. Uh, for a man's life consists of not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, and here's the here's the the thing that he, that he got the 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 point over to them. The ground of a certain man brought forth plentiful, and he thought with himself, "What shall I do? Because I have no room for to bestow all my fruits." Now, ain't that a problem? Mm -hmm. And ain't that a problem to get? To the point to where that you put God plumb out of the picture because that God has blessed you and 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 and, and helped you to raise all of this stuff and He says here He says it's the ground of a certain rich man and God had blessed him and and uh, give him all of these things and he had all of these fruits coming into him and he was just twiddling and worrying and, and all of this about what he was going to do with it afraid some of it would burn afraid somebody would steal some of it and he said what shall i do what can i do and here's what he thought he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room for it to bestow my food? and he said this will i do i will pull down my barns mm -hmm. and build greater and there will i bestow all of my fruits and my goods now what's he going to do and i will say to my soul Right. So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. What a pitiful sight. Amen. What a pitiful sight. Because listen, we have no control whatsoever over our souls uh, with the, the length of time they're going up to live or anything that we, we should be worried about is how that we can make our souls happier in the Lord and, Amen. And, and praise the Lord. But he says, <clears throat> but God said unto him, fool, and the, the this word fool in the Bible says one that don't believe in the God. Mm -hmm. And he says here, 
or it says that there is no God. Fool, this night thy soul shall be recorded of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? And so he would worry about something that he couldn't take care of. And he had no desire whatsoever to say, Lord, would you lead me and guide me and, and help me to uh, do something with these? Would, maybe my neighbors need something, maybe. And, and knowing, knowing that he said here that, that, his, uh, that he was rich and, and he brought forth plenty. So he had all kinds of, of land and probably had all kinds of people working for him. But none of this ever come into his mind, hey, I can share what I have right. with my friends. I can, I can keep some of the kids from going hungry. I can do this because God's blessed me. But listen, that's something this morning, people, we need to, we need to understand for all, all that we have. And if it ain't but one old shirt with a hole in it, listen, God gave it to us. Amen. We did not make it. We didn't do anything. And so what we've got, it's not ours but it's ours to use to honor and glorify god and uh if if we have if we have more than we need the best thing for us to do is try to to share it with someone else right uh but no people say no i'll put that back up no i'll, I'll save that for another and listen it'll rot mm -hmm. you'll die and leave it and if you give it to these people and help them you're 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 in a whole lot better shape towards God than than you would be if you do like this man here and build bigger barns mm. and put it all in there and keep it and say and, and, and go down there and rest tonight say man I got it made and what did he say but God said to him this night he wasn't gonna live another twenty years but right this night thy soul shall be recorded thee then who shall those things be which thou hast provided. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Right. And so if you love yourself in that way, you need to try to, uh, you need to try to break that habit because it's not pleasing to God. It's not pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, if the Holy Spirit, I know, will speak to your heart if, if you're saved. So here it is. And he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, Amen. and the body is more than raiment. And he gives another example here about the raven, and I'll read it real quick and then we'll close. Consider the raven, for they neither sow nor reap, I will crow out here, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Amen. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, which taking thought, can add to this statue one cubit? Or, and which of you, with th taking thought, can add to his statue one cubit? If ye then be not able to do though that thing which is least, why take ye thought of the rest? And then he uses the and he uses the flowers and uh, and the things that we can see out here and the flowers. He says they're beautiful. They're they were more beautiful than all of Solomon's glory. But listen, they toil not. Amen. And, and and he says, I'm the one that does it for them. And so these are some of the things here that uh, I, I I wanted to tell you this morning. But but he says here in verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. Amen. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in heavens that faileth not, where a thief approacheth thee, where not not where no thief approaches neither moth corrupt for where your treasure is right there will your heart be also so this is the conclusion of the lesson this morning and and i hope that it'll uh, it'll encourage you this morning to uh, kind of look on the situation and and see how good you got it and see how that you can make it better right uh, uh we got like john already said we got a a new year starting out and uh, a lot of us will make some new year's resolutions but 
here's the thing do. If any of them is towards God, you, you think on them a long time. And you make sure that you try to keep them. Because, right. Because uh, I, I believe the Bible says somewhere there about it's better to not make a promise than it is to make a promise and not keep it. So mm -hmm. uh, you need to, uh, if you you need to be sincere about it. Uh, when, when you promise God something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.